Welcome to episode 52 of Let's Talk Geek, titled B52. Macro now stocks the Kindle, iOS 5, and the password is Julius. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek episode 52, titled B52. Um, we don't have Tim with us tonight, so I'll be running the show, I guess. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so if it goes pear-shaped, you know who to blame. Tonight, we've got <laughs> Jan on mixing for us. So if it sounds crap, you know who to blame. Oh, thanks a million. Eh? Garrett and Hello. Jan. And, um, yeah. Thank you very much. Let's short and you. sweet introduction. Let's do this. Right. Let's talk geek. Let's dive into it. <laughs> And for anybody who doesn't know, the B-52 is a, is a ginormous airplane um, yeah. called the Stratofortress. I remember playing an old school computer game called, I think, <laughs> uh, Mega Fortress it was called. I could never get the game right because uh, there's like so many toggles and switches. Oh, yeah. I could never like... Oh, it was like a flat I, yeah, yeah, but I needed to like... I would, I, would get co- I would get hailed by like a fighter jet and he'd be like, send your transponder signal or something. <laughs> And then it's like it was a copy protection check or something, and I I couldn't find the right code. So and I had like a retail version of this game. So I don't know, like I could never get that. There we go. There's a nice picture. And go. a friend of mine and I in high school had this massive argument because he was reading uh, Tom Clancy novels or something, yeah. and this B fifty two was this ultimate unstoppable like destructo thing of of evil, and I'm like. Your B-52 minus my F-15 and I'll kick your ass. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, no, no, no. Every missile I fire at him is just flares and chaffs and they magically miss. And it was a massive fire argument. Really close and shoot guns at you. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving along. <laughs> All right. Uh, events this week. Um, there's a lunar eclipse on at the moment. I don't know if you guys looked out outside. No, no, no. We're no. not allowed to leave, though. Starting 20 show. past 8. So we've got a couple of oh, minutes. Is it st- okay, so it's got a couple of minutes. And yeah. how long it's does it last? For about two hours, which is oh, really wow. cool. So, so cool. It's, it'll be completely eclipsed from about half past nine till almost half past eleven. Cool. So, check it out. It's good fun. Right. Um, July first is the close date for submissions for the Google Developer Challenge. So, for those that don't know what the Google Developer Challenge is, it's a competition held by Google for African countries to develop apps for Android. To get your apps in. Yeah. So it's the. Um, and it's nothing like too like no, normally the requirements are very stringent. They're like it has to be African relevant and blah blah no, blah. No, no, this no. This is no, no. very broad be, categories. It's yeah. Broad car- categories. You can just some app as long as it fits into one of those categories somewhere. You might even be able to submit one app for multiple categories. Yeah. I think. So basically, what what happens is a two round process. Um, there's semifinals and finals. So you you need to submit your uh, semifinal entries by July first. Okay. Um, and, all the, and then it's regional participation. So East Africa, Southern Africa, West and Central Africa. And the top, two, uh, the top three applications from each region will then go through to the, um, the finals. And the finals will be announced by July 15th. All the finalists will receive an Android device. And you are given six weeks then to improve your application. What Android device? They don't say. They don't say. Because guess what? I don't want a wildfire. No, no. I think it'll be a developer device. It'll be the, so it'll, it'll be, be a Nexus, Nexus S one, one or something or like Nexus that. Nexus S or something. Maybe even if you can get Nexus S's. We were looking the other day for the yeah. dev Nexus S's and they're out of stock. So oh. who knows? You should be able to get a Nexus S on Vodacom now. No, but we wanted the unlocked dev ones. They're and unlocked, bro. You just no, get no, the no, Nexus the S. Are, everything's open, including all. Vodacom should be. Vodacom we didn't should check be. That. Yeah, we we no. well, they didn't. Yeah, I didn't try but to the, find the Timo version in the US. Yes, the bootloader yeah, has to be unlocked. Yeah, but I think. the what it ships with as well is the full SDK and all the packages, and you can uh, okay. customize your kernel very easily and put uh, custom uh, kernels onto it and stuff like that. It's designed for that. Okay, okay neat. Okay, but they didn't have stock, so who yeah. knows what these are going to yeah. be? But anyway, uh, as I say, you got six weeks to improve your apps, and then at the after six weeks, you can resubmit and then final review. And the top apps in each category will receive $25,000. $75,000 worth of prizes, prizes, three categories. Yeah, so that's, mm. that's pretty, that's pretty good, good incentive. there, hey? I mean... I could do it with $25,000. Well, yeah. That'll buy one or two Android devices. Exactly. <laughs> that'll, <laughs> that'll fund an app or two for you to 
publish them in the market and keep you in beer for a couple of days. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wait. Okay. I think the spin-off is rather going to be never mind the prize money is the fact that you're you are going to get somewhere in the market. Yeah. Yes. So you I might mean, actually and, and make I mean, some more money. Now you've got $25,000 for capital to keep going just a little bit so that you can get another one out. And an ad supported yeah. app. You know, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe another two, maybe another three. Yeah, I mean exactly. I've seen I mean there's some pretty ridiculous apps that have got you know, the guy's charging a dollar for and he's got half a million downloads. That's half a million wow. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, it's, and it, okay, it's not a fart it, app or something. It's quite useful, but it's really not rocket science. Yeah. yeah. Quick, so, uh, a, a quick thing here. I know we're going to probably get into this later, but there was a bit of a controversy this week talking about apps. This is now iOS apps. Yeah. But there's, uh, there was a controversy. There was a guy who submitted an app to Apple that basically does Wi-Fi syncing, right? And that's one of the features Apple unveiled this week. Um, last, last week. This week. Last, last week. week. Last week. Um, for, so you guys have probably already dealt with this. But um, he, he submitted it to, to Apple and they declined it because they say that he was calling, he was making private was API making, calls. Yeah, yeah, he was making he, third party API so calls. So he's, not, he's not allowed to do that. Yes. Yes. And, um, but, they, but they said, this is very impressive stuff. And Wouldn't they, you submit your CV? And they, oh, and they also asked him a couple of weird questions about his app as well. Yeah, yeah. It was a bit in, they were a, bit in, a little bit too interested. Very anyway, interested. Yeah. But, but engineers tend to be interested. Yeah, so that's cool. I, I mean, one, one can be, give them the benefit of the doubt. One can also be very suspicious. Uh, that's up to you. But the bottom line is, is this guy then said, I don't, like he didn't go work for Apple in the end. He put his app on the, on the jailbreak at Broken App Store yeah. and uh, also got half a million downloads. I think at $10 a pop. Mm. He did a care. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so but now unfortunately his app is moot for the people who don't have jailbroken devices. But, but you know, this is not the first time Apple's if they've done this, this is not the first time it's been suspicious. Mm. There was a uh, ebook reader app that um looks suspiciously like iBook. Dude, they they iBook has got exactly the same textures on the bookshelf. <laughs> nice. And all of a sudden, his app was approved and it was in. All of a sudden, like a m couple of months before they released it, yanked it for some odd reason and disappeared. And a couple wow. of months and also, you never know. A couple of months later, suspicious. they get my books. A little bit suspicious. Indeed. But anyway. Anyway. Yeah, coming back to the coming back to the events. Um, I don't know. Seventeenth of July is the Green Lantern. If anyone's interested. Woohoo! Yeah. Green Lantern's cool, man. Yeah, and Lantern. I don't know what the I don't know what's happening on the sixty. Oh, it's Youth Day. Sorry, it said you. Yeah, I know. Okay. I just finished it. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow's Youth Day, so have a good, have a braai. Yeah, have a braai. Ha, have a braai. Uh, it is, a, it is a fairly. It's probably one of the more depressing just public don't holidays. Braai youth. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> it's, it's probably one of our, one of our more depressing public holidays. But I think it's a good time to remember where we've come from and where we're going to. So, you know. Like should maybe I, I don't know I don't if I really should get care. in. No, I don't get into politics. No, dude. it's not politics. It's about it's a, it's about what the what the day is about, right? It's a, it's it's the the day of the Soweto uprising. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Correct. And yes, enjoy the day off. Indeed. Enjoy the day yeah. off. Yeah. Um, and remember to get more dates. Uh, visit stardates.ca today. Yes, please do, and please send us some updates if you've got some. Yeah. All right. Yeah, what the guys need dates. Geeks, you know, yes. geeks and dates. <laughs> yeah, not those kind of dates. But you might be able <laughs> but to. But we need those too. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm Shall we give you a moment, Harry? Do you want to market yourself a bit? Seeing the rest <laughs> no, of us are okay. all in long term put relationships. The on him. Uh, yeah, sorry. Let's just, <laughs> I'll, um, just, I'll just make him run away. Harry, <laughs> okay, you've got, you've got the spotlight. You want to say anything? Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> Moving swiftly. Maybe that's along. your problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, I don't know. Someone wanted to moan about iOS. Fine. Maybe before we do that, let's let's talk about something. It's it's a bit of a moan, but it's also kind of cool. Macro okay. is bringing in the Kindle. Oh yes, yeah. I actually added to the notes there. Very well done. You, uh, my broadband ran the stories and everything, but there's nothing on Macro's website about it. So <laughs> that was like they're yes. cutting it a bit fine for Father's Day. I thought that was their big yeah. drive. Well, you know, and, and they're not saying, they weren't specific, they just said it was going to be rolled out to some macro stores. No, they, uh, one of the stories did say Woodmead and yeah. I think straight on Park. Okay, oh, maybe wow. I should learn to read then. No, but, but I think still, it was but, somewhere okay. in the press release. But now let's talk about it. 2,499. Oh, what come on. a ripoff. Yes, oh, which, that is the 3G one, or is that just yeah, the no, that's 3G Wi-Fi one. 3G? Okay, Wi-Fi 3G. But if but you still, buy you get it from Amazon, you get bucks. it for 700 bucks less than that. Yeah, no, I okay, bought okay. I bought mine with the cover and yeah, everything. Buy the cover. Yeah, with the leather cover, which is 500 rand. Yeah, maybe they're throwing the cover. That'd be cool. It's still it's still 700. Mm. It's still nearly a no, thousand okay. bucks cheaper. Than what I was trying to say is, okay, uh, yes, you can order mm. from overseas. I didn't order my wireless one from overseas. Mm. I just. Amazon wasn't sure about the shipment, so I ordered it locally. So I bought it not from 
have to have the ripoff guys or want it all sorry not yeah. from want it all i bought it from one of the other guys and it was still under 2000 rand so how macro has now gone and bought consignment stock and are not able to give it to the market at a fairly competitive price i don't know i have i have it on fairly good know. authority that they're using an import service they're actually not bringing this in direct from amazon well that's the other question does anybody know if amazon would have actually sold it to his mass mart like that yeah the thing is uh, we, every, everybody thought it's, a, it's, it's the <laughs> walmart not yet. Smart thing walmart mass mart that, it, that no, deal's been that, approved that deal's through isn't it not yet I, it's through but i mean just think about the amount of paperwork it's still left to happen yeah. sure, this, sure, is not, sure. this was not uh walmart phoning up amazon and saying we want ten thousand. this was to go to south africa yeah. Yeah. yes it's not but anyway there. it's it's interesting it's an interesting move and and we'll we'll see how well it does there, there were exactly in, in between the, the 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 comments on my broadband going seriously guys just order this direct from amazon even with customs and vat the it's cool cheaper thing is, cust the, the, the the amazon ordering now is so good they you, they charge you the customs it and import it. everything yeah and i even got i even got a rebate from it because oh, wow. they it was, overcharged 60, you. it was 60 rand overcharged i got 60 rand rebated on my credit card nice, oh, that's nice. Yeah. so so in between those comments there were one or two guys trying to say hey uh not all of us want to order from amazon i don't know why but maybe it's some dudes faster. don't have credit cards whatever um so or hey, well, maybe they just want to walk into a shop and have oh. it there on the day you know, the thing Doesn't is if you, order it, if you order it now you'll have it before no, father's day oh, jeepers in south africa three days Yes, yeah. but okay, but then you're gonna pay for like extra super fast no, shipping. No, three days standard shipping, huh? Yeah, that's about that's about as long as it took for me to get. That's mine. how long it took me to get it when I was in Florida. Yeah, the three hell? days. In <laughs> it took me three days. Take to like get such. It. I ordered it. I literally I ordered it on Wednesday, and it was okay. It only arrived on Monday because of the couriers. And I had to pay ten dollar fee at the hotel no. for like <laughs> accepting the shipment on my behalf. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah. So the, so the top tip is just order it online. Just order it from Amazon. <laughs> Now we're all geeks here. Just it's use a, the internet. It's a good move. I think it's going to do well. They just seriously, the price is a big question mark. Mm. And then uh, the other problem I've got with that sale is you're going to have Anton Sunny walking into Macro buying herself a Kindle. She's not going to be able to load books. Yeah. So I hope that they are going to make sure in the store that people that understand. People have accounts. That they're going to well. understand that, okay, you're going to get this off the counter now, but you're not going to be able to purchase books without talking to Amazon. Yeah. So they need to, I hope they're going to do that. But yeah, that's one of the cool things. If you order from Amazon, when you get it, it's already linked to your account that you bought it because with. Because you bought exactly. it with Because account, you bought yes. it with that account, it's pre-linked. Exactly. Yeah. Off you go. Buy and that is customer service. And yeah. then the second one is we're now knocking Amazon. Or, uh, what is the other products out there? You can go buy the, um, the, the, the look, Nook. What? Oh, over, overseas, you here. can get the Kobo and you can get the Nook. And they're doing well and now. And there's a couple now at, at Kalahari sells. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't no, buy whoa, those. Whoa, the no, no, no. I'm not saying they're any good or anything. I'm just saying you want to know what other ones that were. No, yeah, yeah. Hey, speaking of the Nook, the Sony ones are not bad. Speaking Sony of the Nook, did you see? Because you know the Nook, you can run and it runs Android. Yeah, the Nook yeah, color. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now they've hacked it to so run you can honeycomb. Load, so you can load the Android, you can load the Amazon app on your Nook and then read <laughs> Amazon books on your Nook. Well, you're loading Android, so you yeah, can then Android. load. Nice. Yeah, they've, they've managed to get, I think, honeycomb on it. Oh yeah, and so they've, they've, full they've discovered support, the whole that thing. there's a Bluetooth module in it. What? Yeah, it was added. It's part of the. It's part of. They just shipped that thing. Just here's a cheap tablet. Look at it, guys. It's part of the baseband yeah. processor for their wireless. Which wow. is included in oh, the yeah, it's probably like part of the it's chip. All they need to do was yeah. load the correct firmware and activate the and, and yeah, just load figure the correct out what firmware driver. and load the correct driver in the kernel. <laughs> You've got Bluetooth support on it now. Nice. It's beautiful. <laughs> nice. So anyway, now you can so, get your Bluetooth keyboards out. So yeah, yeah. both, both um, uh, Barnes & Noble and Kobo have now released e-ink readers. That was my big criticism of the Barnes & Noble thing is e-ink is just it's more pleasant to read on mm. than LCD. Yes. And so my big criticism of the Nook would have been it's an LCD display, and they've now released a new Nook with an e-ink display. And so, the color e-ink stuff is coming. Yeah. And foldable and yeah. foldable paper and foldable screens. Ah, it's going to be good. Yeah. I would love e pixel uh, color, keys so Color e-ink will be out within the next, um, you'll check the next, the next Kindle will have color e-ink probably. Interesting. Yeah. It's, 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 almost at production yeah ready. but Will i mean be able to refresh i think fast enough uh, to, to, no it won't be full video or anything like to, that. to get back like to the refresh like rate. E -ink. it'll be the refresh rate of e-ink it'll just be in okay. full color. No. to get back nice. to the e-ink i just wanted to tie into to what johan said um you know um it, it is still it remains a good move by uh by macro because the the kindle is probably the more popular device mm. so oh, yeah, and mean, it probably has one of the biggest bookstores and remember 90 percent of 
people in South Africa don't have internet access. They don't have It's like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, exactly. Yeah. So Check all the they do is... Check the comic that's for that. The, the cool thing is it's the, the 3G one, so mm. you don't need internet access. It's, you don't need anything like that. 3G for life. Yeah. Sorted. So. That, that is actually, I mean, that's probably one of the better data deals we have in this country. Yeah. Is buy Kindle and get free internet it, yeah, for life. It's not fantastic to browse on. No, sure. Hey, but it'll get you. It'll come. Better it'll get nothing. you. It'll come right. You'll get right in a pinch, eh? Yeah. You get stuck in some foreign country, or you, you can get your Google Maps. Really, I haven't actually tried haven't that. It works. That. Uh, yeah, no, no. That's a good one. I must try that. Yeah. I'm I'm, I've managed to get that, my no. broadband loaded on it, and then it takes snapshots of the ads, so they don't <laughs> flash and do whatever. <laughs> Clever. Anyway, so all right. All right. Uh, may, may, maybe once again, before we start getting into mobile <laughs> rants, maybe we should talk about hackers first. Yeah, we go. It's so been a bit, of a, it's been a bit of a busy week for hackers. It seems to be 2011 is going to be known as the year of the hacker. Yeah. The year Tablets, of the, you've but, met but, your match. <laughs> yeah, but not necessarily. Yeah, you've got to be careful with, with what you call hackers. Thank you very much. Okay, because because go, technology. You're getting a $500 they're, they're doing, botnet. They're, more, they're doing more cracking. Than hacking. Yeah, well, they do. I mean, if you look, they they if you look at their website, this is by the way. If anybody who doesn't know what's cutting, there is a group, on, a fairly public group on the internet now, calling themselves Lulzsec, yep. who hack into stuff for the lulz. Yes, and um, and so they have put they've put some public stuff on where they hacked Bethesda. That was their latest target, right? That was two days ago. And that so was what two hundred thousand accounts. They didn't take it. They in their little press release. I think thingy, they took it, but they didn't no, release them. No, they said that what they left were the two hundred thousand Brink accounts because they love okay. Bethesda and they want they don't want to delay Skyrim any. Okay. But like, how about a nice lulzsec hat in Skyrim, guys? <laughs> as part of the press release. So they're they're, they're a fairly you know offbeat funny yeah, bunch. Yeah, it is. But it's it's interesting. The, yeah. the problem is there's a couple of other groups out there at the moment that seem to be just doing it for the money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Lulzsec is sort of romanticizing the practice. I think yeah. they're they're one of the. I wouldn't call them a benevolent group, but they're not a malicious group. Oh, they took down Minecraft. And Eve. I mean, that must have cost him lots of money. Oh, come on. So. I mean, Minecraft's some dude in a shed somewhere. Well, he's got, he's made uh, like he's tens made of a, millions of bucks now. Yeah, well, he has. But That's come on. So. I mean, the guy. It's doing good. He's yeah, not yeah. like some monopoly, you know, some giant corporation. Yeah, so that's I'm, I'm fairly sure he doesn't have a sysadmin. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, his server gets taken down. That's a crappy. And, he, and there's nobody to fix it but him. Yeah. <laughs> so shame. But uh, but and Eve, why? Eve, maybe uh, I don't know. I don't know how challenging that was for them. Look, I'm fairly sure they just bought like a $500 botnet and aimed it. Um, but uh, Eve runs Windows servers. That's actually fairly well Is known. It? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so that was probably not much of a challenge. So that was for the lols. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and um, I see the <laughs> ANC Youth League got hacked <laughs> again. again. <laughs> got hacked again. And old Julius is now defected to cope. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my word. Uh, so what are they doing? Do you know what the what the HL tackle was? I... The thing is, you look at something like this is, um, number one, I don't want to get myself into trouble, but how secure do you think the admin login for this website is? One, two, three, four. It's probably four. Julius. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm not sure if it was really, can you call it a hack or was no, it a lucky guess on a that's password? That's just a luck or a, yeah, or just a or SQL a injection attack. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm not, yeah, let's not go into I'm but that's still quite funny. But, but yeah, the last one on this website was just so funny in the fact that they decided, no, we're not going to like change the face or whatever. We're actually going to post a little blog post that says, no, Julius is defected to cope. It was hilarious. It was just, <laughs> well done. Whoever did this, yeah, well done. It's, it's just hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well. So, I mean, if, if you look at, uh, because the first time it got hacked, I took a look at the source code. I wanted to know if it was like a, a well-known CMS and that it just got hacked because it was that. But this doesn't look like that. Um, it might still be. It's probably Drupal in the back far away somewhere, isn't it? It, it could be because yeah. there's, there's no Joomla or WordPress giveaways. Yeah, um, so, I saw that too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, it might just be a clever, a clever um, you know, obfuscation, obfuscation. There we go. That's the word. Um, but... Uh, I don't think I'm, I'm fairly sure that the guys who did this website for the ANC Youth League weren't, couldn't be that clever if they get hacked. Well, it's every not two necessarily weeks. that. Hey? I mean, it just might be bad config as well. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah server config. It's, uh, it's sure. like if you the times live. If you just take the dub 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 off the front, you get to the the landing page of the Tomcat server. Whoops. Okay, luckily Ooh. it was config. Luckily it's configured. So if you click on the manage and things, well, you don't get any further because it's just you you just hit the uh, denied page but you know it's yeah, it's, oh. it's easy to misconfigure things yeah. like that so. yeah, yeah i don't want to say this too loud huh? but this looks like um front page <laughs> <laughs> i thought it, it looked like uh, and if you look there was a link to whoever designed that page Which and i was hosted on the them. same site 
it's hosted the, the 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 developer. If you go to the first page, so I don't I don't, I don't want to go to go to the first page. You'll see at the bottom right, designed and developed by Wemby. You click on it, and it's it's hosted on the same server. <laughs> oh no! I'm serious. Yeah, and and uh, incidentally, by the way, I don't know if anybody remembers, but the ANC Youth League were fairly outspoken about the Twitter uh, no. back in the day and how their constituents aren't on there. And I see that they now have a Twitter account. Yeah, yeah, yeah they got one. So it's like called the real Julius. No, no, it's it's <laughs> Ansel. It's actually Ansel, Ansel HQ. Do yeah. they actually say? Do they actually use it though? Yeah, yeah, they use it. Is it? So okay. all, all of a sudden, you know, they can, you know, all of a sudden, Twitter is good enough for them. I thought they wanted to close it down, shut down nice the Twitter. Space. Why are they on MySpace? No, let's not get okay. into that. We've okay. given them okay. right. so time. Let's move along. Let's move along. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of hack, w someone mentioned the IMF hack. Yeah, there, there was a... I, I just is that IMF as an international monetary, monetary fund? fund? Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know if you guys took a look at that. No, that was, I didn't. There That's was like a I massive... Like Reuters ran the story as well. That's why I picked up on it. And um, basically, it, it's a, it was a major security breach. This isn't for the lulls. <laughs> this, this was... It's for the bucks. This was malicious. Yeah. So... Um, this is why I'm saying that 2011 will be remembered as the year of the hacker because um, it started in 2010 with S Sony, come on, with Stuxnet. Then in 2011, exactly. So, but Sony, I don't want to say they had it coming, but um, I think the guys from Escapist magazine, there's, there's a, <laughs> there are guys there who make who make videos called um, Extra Credits, mm -hmm. and um, they they do deep analysis into the gaming industry. And in one of their videos, they said, Sony, some free advice. Do not tangle with people who want to load Linux on their PlayStation. <laughs> and well, <laughs> and I, they did. <laughs> so that's what happened with Geohot. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if that was actually for revenge of what happened to Jot. I know the anonymous hack was. I don't know if there yeah, were other hacks after but anonymous. But the, the, the accounts, the stealing of credit cards and accounts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was. Yeah, so it's, it, it was all started with Sony, but there have been some malicious hacks, government to government hacks. Um, or this year, Stuxnet. Yeah, there was Stuxnet last, last year. Yeah, but this I'm just year saying, there's been stuff, mean, and there's the IMF, and there's people. The Chinese are reporting hacks. It is, it is cyber warfare out there this year. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, so it's going to be. And the, the LulzSec wanna... is is doing the today, by the way. LulzSec. <laughs> um, sorry, they're, they're far more fun to talk about than malicious hackers. And LulzSec today, they decided they're going to do a different kind of denial of service. They are now point. They've got a they've got a call uh, a line that you call right mm -hmm. to request the LulzSec can be pointed somewhere. And so today, instead of doing a normal DDoS, they are pointing their, they're pointing their number, they're forwarding it to various people's support, tech support. And today they forward it to all of Warcraft tech support. <laughs> so um, uh, poor Blizzard is getting drowned in fake support calls. Anyway, uh, if you want to uh, have a little bit of a look, a bit of the history of, of hacking groups and stuff, have a look at the uh, loft heavy industries uh where they appeared in front of congress go look for the youtube video it's about an hour long into uh, it's an hour long video of them um presenting in front of congress and there's some well-known hackers um that that presented there and they talk about what they were doing and how they you know basically the press took the story away they can take out the internet in 30 minutes so um yeah. they were talking about uh how you protect you know they, uh, the whole idea is is to get government and corporates talking and thinking about network security because i mean they had some simple examples okay remember this was what 1998 eh? and before that so it was in the the mid 90s oh. they were talking about um the power utilities uh communicating with their SCADOS systems over unencrypted radio mm. so it's not just the fact that you can okay of course replay attack their system yes is you can just jam it yeah. It's a known frequency, you just jam it. There's all sorts of things like that. And they were saying, we need to talk, they, companies, the people need to start talking about security because, you know, it's going to be a problem in the future. Yes. So that's an interesting thing leading up to now what's, what's happening now. So, yeah. And yeah. I mean, uh, one wonders because uh, fr from the looks of it, everybody's stuff is insecure. I mean, it, LulzSec, they, I, I, I don't know how they get in. Maybe it's script kitty stuff. But... Um, the fact is that it's not just Bethesda. They've got into government stuff, yeah. U.S. government stuff. Uh, they've not been caught yet, um, yet with emphasis, um, because people don't tend to take stuff like this lying down. Um, but, uh, I mean, how long have we been in a false sense of security um, with hackers just not going after things? Um, yeah. There's just not been interest or whatever. 
uh, there was far more money in spamming or whatever yes. the case might be. Now all of a sudden, hacking is cool again. Um, and well, so it, it might not be cool. It might just be easy. It, it might exactly, and it, but but that means it's been easy all along. Mm -hmm. But who says they haven't been doing this all along? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank Thank you. You. The, the, the problem it. also comes in, and we actually <laughs> had a discussion at university about this. Um, <clears throat> it comes in with how the developers are trained, and I don't know about you guys, but we don't really do security. how to code from a security standpoint from the time that you learn how to code. You learn no. how to code and you know you try and do things like defensive programming and whatever, but you don't think about this guy is going to SQL inject me. Exactly. You're well, gonna buffer that. overflow your program yeah. the whole time. I mean, yeah, it is a it is a challenge yeah. to think like that, yeah. It's so just, you, it's a you challenge need to, to teach yourself to actually program securely. I think and it's not also use it's also a bit of a challenge because of the way that the industry works, well depending on what field of the industry you're in, but a lot of the industry is rapid application development, you know, agile methods and things mm, like that, yeah. which don't stress security. And, yes. and, and uh, South uh, Africa is... stress crank out the damn features and get them working. As um, fast as possible. As fast as possible. Especially yeah. for internal company yeah. development. And, and South Africa in particular is like a, um, Armitage. Yeah, this, got, this just got mentioned in IRC. Thanks, Jargon. Um, what is this? It looks like a script kitty thing. For Metasploit. Okay, is it a front end for Metasploit? Yeah. Tech oh, management. Tech management for Metasploit. Oh my word. So they've they've dumbed down Metasploit and Metasploit was already easy. Yeah. What the hell? It's a one click bang, you've yeah. One click hack. Oh yeah. my word. <laughs> so like so it's like made... rooting your Android phone. Like, okay, whoa, 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 okay, just bring me up to speed here. So what you download this and then? Well, and then it's one click. Oh, hacking. Metasploit. Metasploit. Uh, okay. Now, Metasploit was already, you just run a command and, and you, you hack can, into stuff. Well, to, yeah, it runs a bunch of exploits it's against a, yeah. the machine you can or whatever you, you feel can, like. You can ARP spoof yeah. all kinds of stuff. Okay, yeah. let's just say Metasploit is a, actually a, a development environment for, for, for exploits. For so it's actually got modules that yeah. you can bring up for specific exploits. Exactly, and, yeah. This is very interesting. Yeah. Have fun. People, yeah, if this sort of stuff works on your network. Make a plan. It's yeah. good fun to and, play And with. that's why stuff like that is actually good for like the sysadmin who's not a hacker. Mm. So he needs to test the, the, the uh, robustness of his network. Hey, that's a cool tool to yeah. use. We will put this in the show notes. It's, um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. But yeah, I agree with you. There's not a lot. There's yeah. not a lot taught. It, it, you see, it comes down to, again, is you know, software, the, it's not really an engineering type discipline in, yet. You but know, they've it, been trying for yonks. Yeah, but yeah. that's the thing. It's because the market pressures are different for, you know, if a building falls over, there's major crap, right? But if software kind of has a couple of bugs in it or falls yeah. over every now and again, and even yeah. most in maj the majority of, of, of instances, it's not the end of the world. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, indeed. All right. I didn't notice I'm on the camera, so everybody saw that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, you know, now you know how we get notified when we start <laughs> rambling. No, Our, it's not that. We still want to catch this eclipse. Yes, yeah. Okay, uh, HTC Desire. Yeah, so you can leave us um, in Okay, us so the first one came from HTC UK on their Facebook page. Still HTC UK second yeah, time. Yeah, the anyway. second one as well. Um, it I, was see yesterday. They, I see they're using Facebook quite often for now for HTC, their yeah. and yeah, stuff. It's quite HTC interesting. HTC does. Yeah. Um, and Twitter, really actually. Their, their Twitter is also pretty active. Yeah. So yesterday HTC UK comes in and they say, sorry guys, we've been trying really, really hard, but we just can't get gingerbread with HTC Sense onto the HTC Desire because of memory issues. So by memory issues, you kind of go and assume, okay, it's not RAM because it's got a nice, what, 512 megs or yeah, something, like maybe even more. I think it's got 576 or something like that, so yeah, it won't yeah. be that. So they actually mean internal storage, yeah, which is 512. Uh, uh, just a quick question. I thought the ROMs were running it already. So what's the yes. Um, well, <laughs> so other, other, check that, this well, that's one thing. That's one thing. So the hackers on XDA have managed to get the ROMs from other devices like the Desire HD and those are the running on the Desire. And confused with the hackers that we've been talking about. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. These are actual <laughs> hackers, programmers. <laughs> yes, these. Okay. So they've managed to get those things running on the Desire fairly smoothly as well. Yeah. Um, they've managed to do it. And then I went and checked as well for the Wildfire S. So you know the HTC Wildfire? This is the, yeah, the, the is. next phone for it. Yeah, it's got pretty much the same specs. 512, well, 512 RAM, 512 ROM, and a 600 megahertz processor, and it's running Sense 2.1 with Gingerbread 2.3.3 on it. So it's got um, less RAM it's got and a less slower RAM, processor. the same ROM, sa slower processor, but it's running the new Sense. So I asked them on Twitter, they didn't get back to me, and then today the Facebook pops up again, and they go, okay, we've kind of rectified our statement, the desire will be getting. 
uh, and it's like the, a one line. It's like it's like a tweetable. It's not yeah. even like a full statement. You know, like the last one was a full statement. You know, <laughs> about yeah, how sorry culpa, they were. Culpa, you know, we can't get it working. And then, like contrary to what we said yesterday, we will be. So it's like somebody cocked up badly on the on the. Maybe uh, their HTC. Facebook page got hacked. <laughs> Yeah, you can just blame it on the hackers. Yeah, why not? They're lead hacksaws. Uh, anyway, but but this this so they're sort of juggling. But the comments on Facebook, <laughs> oh my word! Yesterday, so many angry comments. Yeah. People going, you know, this is my 15 month old device, what or I've hell? had this thing for six months because I was told it's such a great device, and it is such a great device. But now it's not getting updates anymore. You know why? Yeah. When we can look at people like Apple and they're still supporting the 3GS with iOS 5, which yeah. we'll probably get to and, later. And Google, who is still supporting the Nexus the 1. The Nexus 1. Check this you know, post. A year, a year and a half after. Check this post. The guys that can't see the video, there's a guy that actually, after that post of um, uh, no Android gingerbread update, there's a guy, second last post. The guy turns around and says, yeah, Droid 1 at 140, uh, 160 megabytes. Ram is running gingerbread. <laughs> droid one? What the, the, the G one? Like the, the first G1. droid yeah, is yeah. running gingerbread. They've managed to get gingerbread. I think that's a very um open that's a very Android open source project yeah, thing that they so. have going there. So not sense. Sense is very bloated. No, it no, takes up a lot of space that, yeah. and it takes up a lot of resources. Yeah. And so and so this is what we, we got ranting about is the fact that HTC and, and I and I, I had the privilege of sitting across from, from one of the executives from HTC and asking him this question. I'm like, why do you not split what you can out of HTC uh, from of HTC Sense, split it out of the core ROM, put it in the app store? Or, or put it in your own app store. I don't care, yeah. right? And so that it's uninstallable. It, you can move it to the SD card, whatever. Yeah. Just so you or can you conserve can, space. You can move it into actual internal storage, not yeah. the ROM area. Yeah, because the problem with the HTC Desire, and this is the thing that that, uh, that grates my cheese a little bit, is HTC either displayed immense lack of foresight or, or just immense disregard when they when they released the HTC Desire because they released the Nexus One at just about the same time. The Nexus One has a gig of system memory. The HTC Desire has half that. And so on my own HTC Desire, you run out of storage space so fast you, like I cannot install more than yeah you know, I cannot install more than a handful of apps before I need to start deleting stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm just out of space. So even as a journalist, that's a problem because I like you know I like to uh, review apps and and see what's what's happening. But even as an enthusiast, it's a problem because as an enthusiast, I want to be installing apps to check them out. Mm. If I don't like it, I want to get rid of it. You know what you must do. Root. Flash your root it, <laughs> put a flash it, flash a new firmware onto it, uh, format it to XT4. And then you can actually run the app straight off the SD card. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. And, every, and, everybody <laughs> and, and then you slap a 32 gig and, SD and card and it just runs. I understand. Fine. But everybody says this, but this is the, my, my problem. The thing with is that, that it should work like I that know. out of the box. I know. Yeah. So, so, so Android, Android manufacturers, and especially now with the release of iOS 5, <laughs> now leading into that topic, um, Android manufacturers are going to have to jack up their game because iOS 5 has now swiped a lot of features from WebOS, from, from Android, from Windows from Phone Blackberry, 7 from Windows Phone 7, from everywhere. Whoa, 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 whoa. They stole something from W7. True story. I'm not exactly sure what, but they did. But, but they didn't steal the copy and paste, that's for sure. Windows right. Phone... <laughs> <laughs> now, Windows Phone 7 does, does, claim, does claim rights or something. I don't know if it's Wi-Fi Sync or something. Well, Who did Wi-Fi Sync anyway, first? Okay, what I was saying... Another thing. We'll get to that anyway, now. out-of-box experience on Android. It, like, you shouldn't have to tinker to get it to work properly. Fair enough. And I th also think is they're absolutely going completely the wrong way about open source development. With okay. The, with the, with the with how phones, interest, how sir. phones are actually releasing their firmware. Okay. And they should be open. And now HTC HTC has said it, that they read that they will be with their yeah, devices I going know. in. And Motorola has said but the same thing. But they still got the same thing. If you flash it, they're not going to honor the, honor the warranty. No, they will know. Well, are they going to honor the I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see anything. what the new license agreements hey, say. Then it's perfect because and they haven't been. Because well, what you had to do with something like your DHD over there is you'd have to find an exploit. Yeah, no. Or well, find well, a vulnerability to say, exploit mm, to get the terminology right. I would right. really not call it an exploit. It's, it's more like yeah, but it's not a fast it's a OEM hole. unlock. It's a security. Yeah, loop. yeah it's not. Yeah, okay, fine, it's a security hole, but it's really, you upload like sudo to the Look, root the, the phone you, you know how they You sudo. know how they rooted the very, very first version of Android on the very, very first version of the phone? 
they forgot that if you type with the keyboard, it actually types into a console in oh, the yes, background. Yeah. So they just went sudo. Yes. <laughs> and poof. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is they need to engage the community more. Yeah. Really and Samsung, engage the community. And Samsung has, has, has gone a step in the right direction there. They have given Cyanogen an S2. Yeah, they must do it. I mean, come on. There's guys passion out there cranking out code, fixing bugs. I mean, the, the ROMs are now more stable than the stock yeah. firmware. In some come cases, I've found that. Come yeah. on, guys. These guys are doing good, jo- good work. Give them phones, give them some money, get, you know. Hire them. No, Offer don't them even jobs. hire them because the problem is with hire, you lose the, the passion. Yeah, you lose the yeah. passion. But, but, but just definitely engage the community. Drums. Engage the community to get the guys involved, man. Come Work, on. I mean, it's open source. You should be working together. Exactly. <laughs> so instead of pulling in the opposite direction, which yeah. is what yeah. it looks like now. Yeah. Anyway, that's cool. I still think they're ballsing it up, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're right. moving in a better you direction wanna, you now. Wanna, <clears throat> so there's a... There's a there was a table published after though, those of you who, who haven't followed what Apple announced WWDC. That's it's fairly easy to get that information. Just Google it. Um, basically, they announced iOS five, they announced Mac OS X Lion, and they announced iCloud. All right, so um, yes, that's ta- what they're calling it. So, so, so talking about so talking about iOS five, there was a there was a, a, a Mensa candidate on iJailbreak who put up a little. We put up a little table, and I kind of feel bad ragging on journalists because I get ragged on every day. He's a and Mensa. No, man, I'm, it's sarcasm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, no, but <laughs> he did ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, but but he publishes this table where he cherry picks. Uh, not only does he cherry pick a bunch of features that Apple now does with iOS five. Um, and, and doesn't pick features which, which Apple Everyone doesn't is. do. Yeah. Um, so that there's like a whole, and, and those of you who are watching the video will be able to see the website now. So there's a whole row of green checkboxes for iOS 5. There's two checkboxes for Android Gingerbread. There's a bunch for Mango, uh, Windows Phone 7 Mango, and a bunch for BlackBerry 7. So okay. gripe one that I had with this table is he's comparing iOS 5. Unreleased. Unreleased. With Windows Phone Mango, unreleased, unreleased. unreleased. Blackberry 7, unreleased. unreleased, versus Android Gingerbread, which Stable. is on phones <laughs> all released. over the place. In yeah. fact, it's on a tablet too. Yeah. It's released. Yeah. And I think he's comparing 2.3. So he's not okay, even going whoa, whoa, to 2.3.3 or 2.3.4. Leave that. Leave that. Okay, that was the first one. That was the first gripe. So next gripe, phone-to-phone messaging, right? So now, <laughs> which, which BlackBerry now does with BBM and which <clears throat> iPhone will do with iBBM. I mean, uh, I, I message. message. Um, Just so, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, guys, what is Google Talk? I exactly. just wanted and to Skype. ask. Yeah, and like yeah, every Skype, other message. Well, and also, that's, that was another gripe is he's only looking at what's stuck into stock in the ROM, basically. But so how are you going to... G-talk, 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 G-talk stock in the ROM. Exactly. Yeah. So but he G-talk just conveniently stock. skips that because okay. you can talk from phone to PC as well, so it's even better. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So, so camera to me, access. So if you want to get technical here, you I think that phone like to phone messaging button. shouldn't be a red checkbox. That should be, that should be a giant... Yeah. It's pretty fucking simple. But that's because of HTC. Yeah. No, it's a stock. That's the stock. Uh, Android. It's the camera app, but not the lock screen. The way you got to it from you, the lock screen. Is okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just go. Newspaper magazine th- subscription, okay? Yeah, yeah so, so just because, yeah, but not just that, but just because Apple forces you. In fact, you know how happy Apple is about the fact that the Financial Times now has an HTML5 app specifically to circumvent <laughs> the App Store. I'm fairly sure Apple isn't happy about the Financial Times' decision. There. System-wide Twitter integration. So, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. so no, no, no. Advanced reminder system. Yeah, that's kind of cute. Google what do you mean? Tab browsing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, yeah, don't, someone don't missed the along. menu button in Android, so he couldn't get to the. Uh, I don't know. They don't no. understand how the Android browser okay, works, so obviously, all right, cool. They missed that okay, one so up. he's a bit of a wanker. Yeah. <laughs> so why are, we, why are we giving him airtime? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just. I Let's just, just move along. I just had to rant about that. Now that everybody, now that everybody knows, and Wi-Fi sync. <laughs> yeah. well, Online gaming you know community. You know what's even cooler? You know what's you know what's cooler is um, with 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 your Android phone is you plug the USB cable in, and you know what? It shows up as a hard as a removable hard drive, and you just copy files yes. over. You know what's even cooler? You know what's even cooler is you can copy MP3s that. on it and just plays. You, you know Dude, what's even I can, cooler? I can Bluetooth you an MP3, and you can play it. You know, do that with a you know what's even cooler? You don't have to plug in the USB cable. I've got this thing called a file manager that it, it can make it just share as an I've FTP a, server. I've, yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to oh, say. Okay. I've got an FTP server and cloud on here. 
I can SCP it to you. You know what? <laughs> if I wanted to. If I may, this this reporter, yeah, and I'm not know. ranting against reporters. Um, he's got one door on his uh, one button on his remote for his screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the site is called I Jailbreak, so I mean, one has to take. I mean, and he tries to sort of soften the blow at the end by saying, "I'm just happy there's competition in the market," <laughs> but uh, that, which is a fair statement, my friend. But you need to get the rest of the article right as well. Absolutely. So and and. I mean, this is something that I try to do, but it's hard. I mean, because you will always be accused of bias. But there is stuff that all these platforms do really well. So, I, you know, Apple does things really well. Android does things really well. BlackBerry does things Dude, really well. Apple's got a really sweet button on it. This button is really cool. Don't be dissing <laughs> <laughs> the button. Okay, come on. Let's, let's, okay. Um, what else we've got to talk about? That's what we had for the day. Is that what we've got? <laughs> I think that's right. Okay. And so plus, so guys, you all want to get out and see the lunar eclipse. That's what we all want to see. I get out and see the lunar eclipse. So let's go. Cool. We we're going to wrap it up, are we? We are. We're just quickly going to mention some of the other shows. Please catch us on Tuesday nights as well for Let's Talk Spork and Let's Talk uh, Possibilities. Wednesday night is Let's Talk Geek. To Thursday night is normally LT Afrikaans. Not tomorrow night. We're taking a break for the public holiday. Yep. But then also catch us on our website at ltnet.tv TV. as well as just Google us on the YouTube. Sorry. Just search for us on the YouTube channel. <laughs> we'll find us all there. So please come in, watch our shows, and email us anything, anything at ltnet.tv. Uh, LT yes. That's fairly cool. The, the, most creative, the most creative email address, I think, should get a prize. That's not a bad idea. Oh. Yeah. Bad idea. So, so, yeah, you can pretty much send it to anything. So come, yeah. up, come up with something cool. We've and all of us, got we've some got prizes over there in the corner we've, that we're we've, trying we've, to get rid of. <laughs> 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 Are you going to give away Tim's stuffed toy? <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Don't, don't give away the mascot. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, we've had this since day one on the show, so we probably mustn't. But yeah, we'll speak to Tim about it. <laughs> Have a good evening. We'll Go enjoy the clips. Anyway, yep. And thanks for everyone on RC, and we'll check you guys next week. Same time, same place. Indeed. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. Rock out with your geek out. <laughs>